So this is a game I made based on the Great Potato War series by Technoblade, all in 3 days. But before we get there, let's start at the very beginning. There I was, wanting to make a game since I kinda missed doing that. So I started browsing on Edge.io, looking for game jams to participate in. Because the one thing that game jams give you is a deadline. And deadlines are basically the only thing in the world which actually makes me get up and do some work. Eventually, I found this jam called the MFGG Winter Fan Game Jam. The instant I opened the page and saw what the jam was all about, I knew what I wanted to make. That's pretty rare. On the few times I've tried joining a game jam, coming up with an actually good idea that fits with the team is pretty much impossible. It's actually one of the few reasons why I haven't finished a game jam before this. You see, the idea behind the jam is that you have to make a fan game based on any franchise you want. When I first watched The Potato War, I thought it would be fun to play as a cookie clicker-esque game, basically like an idol game. So I thought, why don't I make that? Here's the idea. You start off in an island and you only have one block, kinda like Skyblock. Potatoes will automatically grow on that block and for the first few minutes, you have to manually harvest them, like a peasant. But once you get enough potatoes, you can buy minions, which will harvest the potatoes for you. You can then expand the land, add more minions, and upgrade them. But the game jam also comes with an additional team, which is under pressure. And thankfully, it fits quite well with the game. So I added Squid Kid, your arch enemy, who will also be steadily gaining potatoes alongside you. The first person to get a set amount of potatoes will win. It's that simple. There's just one slight problem. I only have under 3 days to actually make the game, since I stumbled upon the jam about halfway through. Now for any other game developer, this probably wouldn't be a problem. But here's the kicker. I haven't done any game dev or any programming really for a few months. Actually not since around the time I uploaded my last video. In fact, why haven't you uploaded any more videos on your YouTube channel since this video? Asked 5 months ago. So you could say I was pretty rusty, but I was confident. If I could keep it simple, if I used my time well, then 3 days is achievable. Maybe I will spend some time, you know, reading the documentation, looking at my old projects to get a handle of how the game engine works, but it's an idle game. How hard could it be? So I joined the jam. I was committed to it, and I made a plan on how I should spend the next 3 days. On day 1, I'm going to make a quick prototype of the game. The whole foundation. It's like the skeleton of the game. On day 2, I'll start adding more features. What was once a skeleton should now be filled with some more meat and some flesh. Man, I'm really going ham on these metaphors, aren't I? Anyway, on the third day, all, all I will do is to make the game look pretty and actually fun to play. And if we're going for the skeleton metaphor, day 3 will be me building the skin and making the whole body finally complete. So that's the plan. At least that's how it's supposed to go. It's the first day and I spent the afternoon doing some very important work. Rewatching the Potato War series. Okay, now that I think about it, maybe this whole making a game thing is me giving myself an excuse to rewatch the Potato Wars, but it technically still counts as research. To be serious though, rewatching it actually gave me some ideas, like on what upgrades I should add to the minions. So after using up a good hour or two on research, I finally got started on development. But unlike my previous attempts at a game jam, I didn't start out by watching a tutorial. I just made a new project and got to work. I still have some knowledge of how Godot works even though it's been a few months, and if I don't know how to do something, then I'll just google it. I started out by making placeholder art for the grass and the potatoes. Well, placeholder art is in quotations because I plan on replacing it on day 3 with prettier art to make it look better, but well, it didn't go exactly to plan and you'll see why later on. After doing that, I added the ability for the potato to grow and for the player to harvest it. And I didn't expect this, but even placing the blocks is a bit of a challenge. So there's only two sprites, right, for the block. The one for the top and the one for the bottom. If you have a single piece of block here, and you place a block below it, then what should happen is that the original block turns to a top block, and the block you place should be a bottom block. Sounds simple enough. I didn't expect it, but making this turn out to be a bit of a logical nightmare, especially as someone who hasn't coded seriously in several months or so, because there's just so many different scenarios on where you can place the block and what it's surrounded by. The solution turned out to be really simple looking back, but when I first approached the problem, I did it in a way that's so convoluted that if I went all the way through, I'd have to write like 20 if statements or something crazy like that. In the end, I managed to figure out a way to do it using only 4 if statements. But this is something that I've noticed when problem solving in general. When I get stuck on a problem, it's probably because I'm stuck with thinking in the mindset of my first attempt, whereas the solution probably requires a different mindset. The difficult part here is getting out of your initial mindset, and for me, the best way to do that is to just do something else for a moment and re retry the problem another time, which is what I did for this particular issue. So I did all of this using a tile map, which is basically like a grid system of sprites. And take note of this by the way, because it comes up later on. 
I won't spoil it too much, but I kinda regretted doing it this way. I then added the ability to buy more land and expand and also minions. And that's it for day 1. I know it doesn't look like much, but I started pretty late on the day, and I was just starting to get familiar again with the game engine. I just needed to add more features, which was my plan for day 2 anyway. The first thing I did on day 2 was adding separate GUIs for the shop and for the statistics. I then added the GUI for the minions, and this actually took most of the second day to complete. I haven't really done much GUI work in Godot before, so this is all new to me. The GUI is basically the place where you can level up your minions and add all the upgrades that you've bought. When you level up your minion, you will basically increase the amount of potatoes you get from a single harvest. Now with the upgrades, there's a big problem. I added two. The minion expander, which just basically increases the range of blocks that your minions can harvest, and also the hamster wheel, which increases the speed that the potatoes can grow by 5%. Now the minion expander is fine, it works great, but it's the hamster wheel that gave me some problems. See, I got this bug, this issue, when you have multiple potato minions placed. When you upgrade one minion using the hamster wheel, suddenly the potatoes which are in the range of other minions will stop growing. This baffled me and I spent a good amount of hours trying to solve this issue. And it's not like this is a small bug which I can just ignore. No, this is a game breaking bug. I seriously considered quitting because it was around the end of day 2 and I haven't accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish. But I finally figured it out. Now I'm not gonna go into the technical details of what exactly happened because that will be a bit boring. But it has to do with tile maps. Since I used a tile map to place the potatoes on the screen, I handled all of the logic of the potato growth in one centralized script. And since different potatoes will have different growth rates, putting all the logic in one place really complicates matters. So I did what I should have done in the first place. I made all of the potatoes into objects, or what are called scenes in Godot, and handled all of the logic there independently. Now the only reason I didn't do this earlier, and this is a bit embarrassing, is that I kind of forgot that this was a thing. Yes, I forget that scenes and instancing was the thing that I could do, since it's been a very long time, as I've said since I've even used Godot. And that's crazy, because scenes and instancing are very fundamental to how Godot works. You can't really make a complete game without it. I still use the tile map to show the potatoes on the screen, but all of the logic of how it grows, how it's harvested, and all that is handled by a script in each individual potato object. Again, in retrospect, the solution is really simple, but the reason I spent so long solving the bug is that I couldn't figure out what the issue was in the first place. I didn't know what was wrong with my code. And day 3 started with a little bit of panic. Earlier, I have set up a plan for what type of stuff I should do each day, but solving the bug in day 2 really derailed those plans. So on day 3, I had to do all the stuff I didn't manage to complete on day 2, and also the stuff I had planned to do on day 3. Plus, I was not at home until noon since I had to run some errands. It was not a good day. And the submission time was 2 a.m. in the morning, and by then I had around 14 hours to complete the game. I have attempted some game gems in the past, but I've never actually finished one, and I didn't want this to be another instance of that. I had to finish the game, so I got to work. I added a leveling up system, and then I made it so that you had to unlock upgrade slots in the minions and start making the prices actually balance. I then made the UI for your progress, where you can see how much potatoes you have collected compared to squid. Now at first I, ma I made the goal amount, the amount of potatoes you need to win, at 10,000, but I found that the player can get to that amount fairly quickly, around 5 minutes in fact, so I set it to 100,000. I started balancing the prices to make sure the progression is fair and fun, but I could, I could not afford to spend too much time on this. If you actually play the game, you'll see that it isn't really that balanced. I also had plans of other features, but again, it's nearing the end of day 3 and all I did was just do the stuff I had planned to do on day 2. The game doesn't have a lot of features as of now, but it's fairly playable, so I had to get started on the aesthetics. I improved the art a little bit, I considered changing the textures for the blocks and the potatoes and the minions since they are, after all, placeholder art, but I'm not really a good artist and I didn't even know how I would improve it, so I just left it there. I changed all the other textures and I think the game looks quite decent now. I made it so that the screen will shake once you harvest a potato, and I added this floating text which indicates how much potatoes you get on a single harvest. Harvesting potatoes actually feels kinda of fun now. Then I added what I think made the biggest difference, sound effects and music. The difference is night and day. It's actually incredibly satisfying now to just do anything. For the background music, I went to good old Kevin McLeod and found one which matches the atmosphere of the game. After I am a menu, and a victory and a defeat scene, I was done. I still had around 3 hours until the game jam ends, so I could probably have added more features, but at that time I was already pretty tired and I just wanted it all to end, so I submitted the game anyway. I was actually a bit shocked to the response the game got. Even though I submitted it to a game jam, I never actually expected anyone to play it. I've never done a game jam before, so maybe this is just normal, but I got thousands of people to look at the game and a couple hundred to actually play it. 
There's even some people discussing the game in the comments. It's actually insane, because the game is about such a niche topic, and I doubt anyone who played it actually understood the series that it came from. And that's the Potato War. Can you beat Squid Kid in the game? How long did it take you? Let me know in the comments. I'll also really appreciate it if you subscribe. I'm planning on uploading more videos in the near future, and if you enjoyed this one, you'll probably enjoy those too.